Bonjour mes amis, hi guys, uh, I am back in Hong Kong after a uh, European hiatus of a month. So I'm going to take you down the streets of uh, Hong Kong, see a bit uh, where the watch market is uh, standing. I don't expect dealers to have uh, really uh, thrown the, the towel uh, just yet. As I've explained in uh, a couple of months ago in uh, my uh, market update, as we are here next to uh, an Aris uh, boutique, the only one here in Hong Kong. They get all the brand new, brand new stuff. Yeah, as I've explained a couple of months ago, just like everything uh, that concerns consumers, it's going to take three, four, maybe six months from the time the stock market really takes a hit to really hit the, the consumers as we see uh, inflation really, really high. Uh, that's going to impact uh, all sorts of... Uh, uh, all, all sorts of places in the uh, economy and we always see already see uh, defaults here and there in uh, mortgages and uh, car loan repayments and, uh, and whatnot but anyway uh, back in Hong Kong and uh, already I've been to the Omega boutique with my buddy Simon I went to uh, another shop considered buying uh, Nomos uh, the Autobahn if you want to know everything and today I was playing with my collection and then I get a bit tired of it. I started feeling again this, uh, this fatigue of, uh, of, of collecting. I don't even know if I should call it uh, collecting. And uh, I will explain uh, why. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking at all the things I've been uh, buying recently. And I know the next few months there'll be a lot of uh, expensive things to, to pay for. And uh, yeah, maybe I've been uh, overextending, uh, overindulging to use a, a word that uh, hotel chains <laughs> love to, to use in every single ad. Have you ever noticed that? I hate that word, indulging. But uh, yeah, it's indeed the word to use uh, in what I've, been, uh, what, what I've been doing. And I'm wondering where, where this is all uh, going and uh, if I'm really enjoying the, the watches that, are, that I'm buying, as uh, we see here, a very cool uh, Omega here. Very affordable price too. Uh, on the wrist, and it's a good example. Here I had to tick the uh, GMT Master 2 box. I have the 16760, uh, nicknamed the, the, the Fat Lady, the first of the GMT Master 2. And uh, I've barely worn it uh, yet. I've barely enjoyed it. Uh, I was going to take it on holiday and in the end I took uh, a Tudor, which is the, the usable watch. Which brings us to the, the point I wanted to, to make. Uh, am, I, uh, am I really a, a collector here? Or do I just have a, a usable assortment of watches just like, uh, just like uh, my uh, wardrobe? And I think uh, many of you guys uh, watching, uh, given the, the things we talk about every day, uh, I think are going to feel the, the, the same way about it. Here are the streets of uh, Yomate. M might feel the, the, the same way about it. In the sense that uh, a collector, a true collector, well, first usually has a, has a lot of means. And, uh, you know, it's easy to be a great collector on Hodinki and uh, having vintage Pateks and all that if you're a millionaire, right? If you're not, uh, it's easier to be just a collector of, uh, of Seiko's. So I can say that I'm a collector of Seikos. I bought quite a few just, just to own them. And uh, even that is starting to, uh, to burn in my watch box. I, I kind of feel like getting rid of a, a lot of it. Uh, you know, nothing wrong with that. You can collect things for a while. I used to collect keychains when I was uh, a kid and then, uh, then you move on from it. So you keep them if you can. And if you need the money, you, you move on. But for more, the most part, I think we all and when I do my collection reviews, I call them collections, we, we try to uh, tick a few boxes, right? Make up a good assortment of watches. You want a dress watch, a diver, 
the uh, inevitable chronograph, a GMT, but uh, that is akin to uh, having a, a wardrobe. You know, you need clothes for the office, clothes for, for leisure, clothes for, for every day, and of course you always have that odd, the odd white pants as we're getting near the uh, watch stores there. You also, we all have the odd white pants or flower shirts. We think we will maybe wear one day on holiday and we never do. And uh, so that can happen in a, in a small collection even. You, you buy your watches because you love the look of it, but you're never gonna, really going to wear it. Um, but really, that's not really collecting. Uh, collecting is having a team like, uh, oh, I want to have uh, all manual wines or I want to buy each year of the Submariner vintage pateks or I want to have all red dials you know you sort of follow a course and by doing so you're always content because uh, you, you know where you're going you want to get the collection complete and there's always uh, something else to add and nothing that you've added uh, bothers you we get to a queen watch one of my favorites Catch our breath here a little bit. I've always liked this uh, 116000 with the pink and this is. If I go a bit silent, it's because it's a bit embarrassing sometimes when there is somebody next to me. Uh, yeah, the Explorer 2s, the prices have never really... Uh, oh, this one is really, really cheap. 65%, it must be all scratched up. But yeah, the prices have never really uh, exploded. A little bit in the craziness of all the rest, but uh, yeah, now they are deflating uh, pretty quickly. This is overpriced. This shop here is usually very overpriced here we got some APs if you like that this is really coming off quite uh, steeply it was over 200 now it's 164 I think the real market is at at retail for it is going to have to uh, to wait for it we'll talk about the market in a minute but but really uh, sometimes I add pieces and I kind of feel like I'm a collector but soon enough I'm getting the, getting the mood that is just uh, too much that it's not uh, me that there is no clear path and that um, right now I'm feeling looking at my watch box that I like all the watches that I've bought but I could do without most of them. Uh, I've enjoyed them. And again, nothing uh, wrong with that, but I feel better with a small, good assortment of watches than uh, with a bunch of, uh, with too many. So maybe I'm not truly a uh, collector. Uh, maybe I prefer something more, more simple and I feel like a lot, of, uh, a lot of you guys, this is quite nice always, 39mm red grape, easy gateway into uh, Rolex ownership. And I think a lot of you guys uh, are the same, we're not actually collectors, uh, we are more enthusiasts and want to have a nice assortment. Uh, but we carefully select what we what we add. We don't just add everything following a collector's uh, theme. I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe I'm right. Maybe I, I, I'm wrong. Anyway, this shop here tends to have uh, some uh, some nice vintage. But you've seen it be before. 
What we want to see a bit is the, the prices, but here is dealer's prices, and I think the true market, as I said, we, we will not be known. The true market is what people are willing to pay, whether it's the end consumer or whether it is the, um, the, the, the flippers, and the flippers, as we know, have uh, really uh, calmed down. It's a bit of a panic, and uh, people are trying to uh, get, their, get their money back. Oh, look, the little Tiso Janeiro that uh, was made famous uh, by TGV on the Urban Gentry channel. is uh, still there. It's been there for a long time. See, there's never any hurry to buy stuff that is not non-Rolex here because it, it just stays there for forever. Uh, what's the price for that? I can barely see. I think 14,000 Hong Kong dollars, about 2,000 US. A very very beautiful watch um, you know again I think it's more collecting for me if I buy something uh, something like that because it's, I'm not gonna wear I know I'm not gonna wear it I'm not gonna wear it every day at least or not often uh, something a bit more interesting here actually that's a good price 5036 so the 5035 is the first annual and then the 5036, they added the power reserve, if I'm not mistaken. Very practical watch with loom, full calendar, annual calendar. And here, full white gold for 248. It's actually, uh, in this shop, which, which usually doesn't have good prices, it's actually uh, pretty good. Of course, this is smaller. It's a 36 or 37 millimeter. But with a full bracelet, it will wear a bit uh, bigger. And uh, another one uh, with the black dial next to it. Uh, this one is full set. This one probably just the just the watch. Uh, they're not that old, but yeah, you can understand uh, that somebody working with that just wanted to uh, leave with a uh, Daytona full gold and uh, left his uh, Patek there. I don't know, maybe a tourist from Japan or whatever. This has always been interesting, but. Here on the 5035, I just hate that the two day and month windows don't have the same size. I don't know why they couldn't arrange that better. It just bugs me too much. I, don't, I can't live with that every day. And a 5146, so the one that came after the 5035, 5036. Uh, this one I think is overpriced, 318. It was more like the 225 kind of price level uh, a couple of years ago. Yes, everything is up, but I don't think this is that hot. Uh, but this shop here in general is uh, extremely overpriced. It's called a Union Classic Watch. In Yomate was the point. These guys still asking uh, 198, while everybody's uh, showing uh, in the 160s for the uh, the root uh, beer. So um, yeah, people often ask me. Uh, Hey, where to go? Well, you, you go here. It's called uh, Dundas Street. So the main street is over there. Dundas is here. You can stop for a sushi. Uh, if you like uh, vintage Rolex, uh, my time here. Um, always have a few also, uh, the Tudor big blocks. These have been there for, <laughs> for years. I mean, uh, the stock doesn't move uh, very quickly, and I can see the store has less and less watches, though. I don't think it's because there's that many customers, but their prices are stupid. Here, 91 for uh, Polar. He's never going to sell that. Uh, but that's the, that's the way uh, the property market and the, the watch market uh, goes in Hong Kong, you know. Uh, you got to bargain uh, hard because they're not going to give it to you, and they're never going to show lower uh, prices. There's a much more interesting shop here, just around the block before we go into the, the, main, uh, the main gallery. With a cool name, Trendy Watch. Trendy Watch. Um, this is where I got my uh, Datejust Wimbledon dial, uh, pretty much retail price. Uh, best price uh, in the city uh, back then. So the yeah, one of the interesting uh, trends is the the Hulk. It was a uh, near, it was 180, 200,000 Hong Kong dollar. Now it's in the 150s. I saw one at 150 uh, on the dot. 
and um, you, the, that watch has been produced for 10 years. Uh, the new Starbucks is just as uh, as nice, and uh, yeah, this one will remain uh, special. But there's just tons of them around, so uh, I think it's justified that the price would come off. I, I think there's still uh, more to come uh, to come off on the on the Hulk. But uh, hey, what do I know? Uh, you have to realize that uh, July, August are typically very slow, very slow months for for the watch industry so it's normal that uh, dealers are taking it easy not panicking the buyers will come back in uh, September when all the traveling and all that if you want to buy a uh, fake guns I don't advise you to do so but you can do it here and uh, usually the hottest time of the year for dealers is uh, bonus time so around March April uh, for for bankers uh, at least uh, so yeah here we are in the uh, the main uh, the main place I always tell people start with a London watch it's the, the nicest store and uh, good reputation oh, that's quite nice Start here and then you, you go circle around. There's a whole bunch of uh, shops around around here. But again, I've seen these watches for a long time uh, here. Look at this uh, Fuchsia, a classic, uh, what, 551? No, no, it's a CC dweller. Uh, 1665. In some ways, the Explorer, that's the coolest watch. Uh, Rolex makes. Uh, I'm telling you, if I was to keep just one, it is my Explorer. At the end of the day, I feel at home with it. Okay, these have been here forever. Let's look at something else than Rolex Cartier Pacha with the grill on it. See, the collector in me wants to add one of these. <laughs> and uh, the, the same guy in me that just wants to wear his watches know that uh, it's a bad idea. I'll wear it uh, once every blue moon, but uh, you know, like the Zenith, it's also cool and uh, it's, uh, it's original. It's, uh, it's what makes uh, watch collecting fun. Uh, you buy a, a Rolex and I was just in the train and uh, everybody around me was wearing one. It's, I feel stupid when I wear my Rolex. Uh, Rolex for me is a personal pleasure uh, at the office maybe. But once I'm outside, my, uh, my true pleasure is, uh, is to have something that uh, other people uh, don't, don't really have. I wonder if uh, many of these have ended up in the, the hands of an actual customer. I think it's, these have just gone from dealer to dealer. And uh, we don't know the true price as a result of the one, two, four, three hundred. I, I don't feel like we, we do. I think it's uh, one of the most scammed Rolex uh, watches of, uh, of modern times. This is one of the most interesting uh, shops. They actually have uh, nice vintage pieces. Uh, oh, yeah, there you go. I have an FP Jean. Yeah, that is wonderful. It's the kind of watch, you know, you have one of these, one Explorer. If you don't feel the, the soul of a collector anymore, you just want to have the best uh, an FP Jean. Even the, what they call the entry level is, uh, 
is good enough for me. The Patek uh, was 6,000 reference here. Some Magenta uh, watches. Uh, yeah, no prices here. You gotta go in and uh, negotiate. 5513, I wanna say. Double red line, but be careful uh, because uh, you never know what can have been uh, done. A lot of people ask me as well, are all these uh, watches uh, real? Ooh, as we find a, a great uh, Cartier. This is nice. Uh, this is more my speed at the moment. Finding a great pieces like that at a discount. Oh my God. I'm a little tapped out. Uh, returning from Belgium, having bought a couple of watches and uh, having had to pay a, a surcharge to come back on, on, on business class. Thank you, Cathay Pacific, for uh, screwing me. Um, looks like the price is 100,000, maybe 200,000, I don't know. Uh, I'm a little tapped out, so I have to be careful a bit, uh, but this is... Uh, I come here maybe with this watch with half a mind to uh, trade it out. Yeah, you're going to say already, but it's just that I know I had to tick a box and uh, it's not really, uh, it's not really where my mind is at uh, right now. Cool uh, print date there. 79280, uh, so with the rounded case. While well, the big block would be a 180, 170, with a GMT bezel, uh, 160 with the uh, black uh, bezel. So the one with the 200 series, that would be the rounded uh, cases. Oh, there you go. Tudor Ranger. 20,000, that's the original uh, Ranger. I've never even tried it on. Let's see if they have a north flag. Uh, don't seem to have one. You know, I almost like those uh, Bulgari uh, watches. They're kind of cool. They even have a GMT now. A GMT Pepsi. Makes you think that eventually every brand is going to make every permutation of everything possible in the world. <sighs> Too much Rolex than I can really care for. I think if I had to have just uh, just the one, it would be the, uh, the the root beer. But as you see, price is coming off in the 150s now, getting closer to retail. Uh, just gonna wait to get it at the shop eventually. And this is my favorite Daytona, which was in the low hundreds, and then uh, jumped. To the 200s suddenly in a couple of months I don't th and uh, all the ones I've seen have never been sold so it, it, sh it shows you that uh, well it's just like the, the the stock market you know everything goes up in uh, sympathy but the, the real uh, good good value is uh, is somewhere else And speaking of the, the, the stock markets, we complain about watches because this is our, our dear hobby, but it's not a big difference between, uh, well, the watches have been treated like stocks, like Bitcoins, just people buying to, to speculate, right? But um, it's the same. I'm sure you don't see anything wrong with buying uh, stocks of uh, Microsoft. You don't do it because you love Microsoft. You want to be part of their adventure, their journey. You're not collecting uh, Microsoft stocks. You just want to make money. Well, it turns out uh, you can also make money buying uh, watches. So, you know, to be the devil's advocate, I can understand. And uh, looks like uh, this little uh, watch party is coming to, to an end. Now, this shop here has an amazing uh, private collection. Well, I guess if you insist enough, they will sell you anything. But every time I come, they have something uh, crazier here on top of the, the shelf. Uh, we see longer, a lot of longer today. All longer on the top shelf. 
but yeah, it is top shelf watches with a speedy Tuesday. Uh, longer here. A lot of people, I think, are going to try to uh, diversify and uh, get away from uh, the usual suspects. Some nice, uh, nice dial there on the day date. Salmon dial, eighteen two three nine. Three of them. This shop has really a series of uh, of watches. Really a collector's uh, collector's dream. Look at this one there. You know, when Rolex does these uh, artisan jobs, they really uh, they really get the best the best tones. And here, uh, Middle East uh, Santos Dumont. That is so much more special than uh, the stuff you can buy at the boutique here in Hong Kong. Cool Patek Philippe here. And again, the, uh, the longer display, but uh, uh, so far, this is maybe the coolest thing we've seen. That is really special. I mean, you wear that you're in Hong Kong, and that is quite unique and opens up a conversation. I wonder if it's, yeah, it's probably old steel. Yeah, maybe worth asking what they, what they want for it. I would trade a Rolex for that. And I think Rolex knows it. Uh, that's why they don't increase the prices too much, increase the increase too much the uh, production because they, they know the, the market has uh, fads. It has been like that before, before Lehman. And it came off and then people forget and then greed takes over again like, like this, asking 200,000 for, for this two-tone as if it was uh, <laughs> as if it was popular. And uh, yeah, they, they, they have uh, loads of these, the Maserati dial there, as it was dubbed by uh, the pontiff. There you go, 150s here. So be careful, you gotta shop around. Uh, that's a fair price. I think if you were going in and saying uh, 145, uh, you could get the watch because every shop has adjusted their prices. And the two-tone uh, here, which I, I like a lot actually, and it's a great way. If you don't, if you can't get this one, you can still get these and uh, a lot of uh, personality, a bit of green on them. Green, yellow looks great. Um, and, and these also coming off. Dealers tried over 120 for a while and now they're back to the near the hundreds. Full set min 110, I think. Another uh, Santos there. And the best price on the Hulk right now, 148. And even less now for the, uh, the Starbucks, 135. You can see this guy is trying to move some uh, some metal. And here the steel blue sky dweller coming under the 200s now. That too has been, uh, I mean, it's a big, big watch. Not many people can pull that off. And that too has been traded like a Bitcoin. I don't think many people are actually wearing the, the, the sky dweller. Gary, good luck moving these. And this shop used to have nice uh, Omega. Looks like they changed. It became just the usual. You're looking for Omega? Yeah, used to have. Ah, oh, the next one, yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, this is another one, a new one. Just open, uh, Bags and Rolex. Two weeks ago. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. People come to you, or you, you go, or the, 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 at the um, shops, you can get them straight away. Uh, I can say eighty uh, percent from overseas. Overseas. Twenty percent oh, from yeah. Hong Kong. Yeah, they didn't move it out of the market, right? From, from Germany, and Holland, and all that. Because uh, we have we have uh, staff based yeah. based in Europe. Yeah. yeah. He communicate with the dealer over there. Well, for you, it's good because the euro is cheap, so you can make a little extra margin right, right now. 
and Japan. Do you get some from Japan? You get some from Japan. All, all the Bulgari is from Japan. Yes, yeah, from Japan. Huh? Yeah. Which one's your favorite? My dream watch is a uh, PP five five nine nine zero. Uh, the rose gold. Yeah. Yeah. I like the fifty seven twelve. I think that's uh, my one and done. Fifty seven twelve is just. Uh, we have few. My favorite. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but a million dollar. Brand new, <laughs> brand new, uh, used, second hand. Million dollar. And you feel confident now the market is going to be good for you? It's a bit coming off. It's um, a bit rough. Okay, when we, when we buy the watch from the dealer, it's, it's wholesale, wholesale. Yeah. Not retail, right? Wholesale. Yeah. I mean, the wholesale price uh, is stopped for a while. Yeah. Because um, maybe two months, three months, one month ago, every week job. But uh, for the last not last two weeks, stop. Okay. And you, you've moved a few pieces already? You managed to sell a bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Every day. Because it's, it's more quiet in the holidays, right? I think it's busy March, April, when people have, uh, have money. But no, no, in, in Hong Kong, uh, maybe a little bit different. In, in summertime, OK? Everybody have, have the, um, the emotion yeah. to, to buy something. Oh, yeah. Especially summertime, because um, Short sleeves, everybody yeah. wear watches. Yeah, it's different here. And people maybe don't travel as much, especially right now. But in Europe, everybody's traveling, so it's very quiet. So you can find everything. Where are you from? Uh, Belgium. Belgium. So I was in Belgium last month. I've never been to Belgium before, but um, England, I mean uh, London, Amsterdam, Rotterdam, Germany. In Paris? Most of the time in, in uh, uh, yeah, Paris, yeah. Uh, Rome, Milan, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm traveling a lot. For your opinion, my, my, my stock, okay? Yeah, you got everything. You got the, the good ones. Uh, yeah, how do you decide? You, you try to have a bit of everything. Do you sometimes buy more than one? Like, you, you have only one? Five or six, or do you have more than one usually? Uh, in five or six, only one. Yeah. But uh, some other model, for example, I told you before the uh, uh, five seven one two. Yeah. We got three. Yeah. Different year. Oh, okay. Yeah. And. And how do you manage? Home, you don't you don't worry to have too much. You know, if the market comes off, it, it's okay. Of course, if you if. Uh, uh, if you bought the watch from, from March, February, yeah. everybody lose money. Yeah. Now, job, high price, buy some, low price, buy some. Yeah. <laughs> now, middle. I mean, Hong Kong is a bit lower than everywhere. Usually, Hong Kong prices are a bit lower. Yeah. And now, Japan, every time you look, yeah, on the 24, it's Japan lower is because only, the yen is so weak. Uh, the only reason is the currency. Yeah. yeah. But Euro is also lost. 12% against the dollar is last very, year. very special because of China. Now yeah. China, they have no business. Yeah. Not, not, very, not very low. It's low no and no low. People <laughs> don't buy. Yeah. Uh, because, because of scared. the COVID. Yeah. The government closed everywhere. Shut down everywhere. Yeah, the exports, the imports of watches in, in uh, China are down 20%. While they're up, in, up in the US, but down in China, down in Hong Kong, at, at least uh, at least thirty to forty percent. Yeah. At least. And the economy is just starting to go down. And, I think there's know, more. In, in Hong Kong, the watches, if not for user, the end is go to China. But yeah. now, no business in China. Yeah. They, they don't want watch anymore. And for you, you don't have mainland Chinese coming here either. So mm. it, it's even it's though tough. the rich people, you know, in, in China they have many many rich people, right? Yeah. Uh, they shut down uh, Shenzhen, Guangzhou, Shanghai. Yeah. Okay, these big, three big cities. Yeah. Over, over three months, the rich people they alert. Even I'm so rich, I got money. I, I drive Ferrari, Lamborghini. I, I, uh, I I'm living in a, a very very nice house, but but the government can can break the the, the door yeah. and stop me everything. So yeah. they start thinking. Uh, this, uh, how do you say this in uh, the, uh, the luxury, the luxury yeah. goods 
You don't want to show. Necessary for me. Yeah. There you go. Brand new shop in uh, in Hong Kong. Just two weeks ago. Come see Leo. <laughs> Come and buy a 5712. Ah, that's great. Okay, and uh, yeah, this shop has three GMTs. You can see every shop has the same uh, same watches. This is overpriced. You can get uh, discounts now on the uh, the ceramic. Uh, AP. Okay, so on this side we have uh, a speedy uh, specialist. Here we have the Alaska project. What's the price? Oh, very cool uh, there with a big uh, protection case. I don't know what this one is. Oh, that's a racing that actually says racing on it, but actually it looks more like a actual uh, Speedy Pro. That's a very cool dial actually. I don't think I've seen that one before. Uh, Speedy Date uh, Japan. I wonder if it's not the one that I had and that I sold. Uh, I could identify it. No, this one looks a bit more beat up. So many speedies, uh, so little time. Uh, this one is quite cool. I think it's uh, all the missions, for the 12. All the mission badges. Looks like the Typhoon has uh, caught up with me again. That's the kind of gear you need today. Uh, the Hulk, you can see the problem. There's Hulks everywhere, tons of them. So prices in the 150s. Hulk is a good indicator of uh, where the market is. I think there's more downside to it. So... Always some good, good vintage at this shop here. So there you go. I think you have a good idea of uh, where prices are for the the moment. I would say a good 25% uh, down overall. I think everything is still very expensive. Business, uh, I think, is slow, especially at the uh, authorized dealers. He's a Grand Seiko specialist. Not such a good price, you know. You can get the same prices straight from the authorized dealer. On this uh, GMT, for example. This is the Sunset uh, GMT. Uh, always some uh, older models. You have uh, Marine Masters. Easy to find here in Hong Kong to find the original Marine uh, Masters. Grand Seiko Divers. And here, yeah, a watch that used to be at the, the shop over there, actually. <laughs> Weirdly, maybe it's the same owners. Uh, this is the, the Zin. You know, Zin had acquired the rights to uh, produce the Breitling Navitimer, well, a Navitimer. And uh, I think later on, Breitling realized it was a mistake. Uh, but there you go, you can find the Zin Navitimer. If you want something a bit more original than the uh, Breitling, I think for a collector it's interesting. I like this Frank Miller, by the way. Again, getting back to our earlier conversation, I think the uh, the collector in me wants to buy these watches, and uh, the sane mind in me uh, knows I'll never wear them. It's just for collecting, and I'm often times not feeling like a collector, and then. Uh, yeah, what do you do with all that stuff that uh, you build up in your mind to be uh, so, so special and turns out to be uh, not so special. Uh, more 
more dials from the Grand Seiko. There's a one more shop over there. I hope the rain is gonna stop. Looks like it's a bit more quiet now. It's a T3 alert today. So T3, you can still go out, but at times the rain is insane and the wind uh, as well. And uh, T8 is when it gets really sketchy. T9 is when you should uh, take cover and uh, stay home. Bit of vintage. Oh, there you go. The original Depth Master Mini Panerai from uh, Nevada Branch and. Here we have a Tissoni Racing, Valgo 72. Omega Calibre 861. Mini Tudor Sub. An Omega Dynamic. Interesting long jeans, flyback. 30 CH chronograph, $36,000. That's an interesting uh, different watch. You don't want to have the usual. Yeah, there you go. This is close to retail, but it's a 2013. I mean, come on. Um, yeah. Might as well buy some uh, army gear and uh, be ready for the revolution. The next one uh, here in Hong Kong. We need a revolution to uh, free all these uh, Rolex uh, from, <laughs> from captivity. Uh, I think there is a glut of brand new Tudors. Uh, the Tudor market is going to sink really, really fast. I always see all the new models uh, below their retail prices, like uh, weeks after the releases. I think the one that will go the lowest, the fastest, uh, will be the, the Ranger. But even the, the ceramic and the, uh, the bronze, which, is, uh, so, which are so cool, are trading. Uh, you can find them at, uh, at a discount already. People are just dumping the, the stuff. I think everyone got too excited and uh, is trying to um, to get rid of their uh, of a lot of their watches. Cool, one million dollar here. Yeah, there you go, if you want your GMT. A bit above uh, 10,000 US. Another watch in captivity. Never been worn, certainly. There you go, easy entry into Rolex ownership. I actually like the, the Milgauss, like this black non-GV. But the GV is even cheaper. Not top condition because they easily scratch, but hey, at least you get your Rolex. Thank you.
Here we go. Every day another shop opening. I just bought a mini umbrella. Egg farts. Always delicious. Fish balls. And I don't want to know what that is. And uh, no, unlike in many countries, the street food here I wouldn't recommend it. It is actually quite putrid. As much as I could spend the hours walking in uh, in Tokyo or anywhere in Japan for that matter in Hong Kong you just want to get to where you're going and uh, not spend too much time in between so many new dealers have popped in the past uh, in, in the past couple of years and as one was explaining to me if you don't have a, a shop it's harder to convince people to part with a million Hong Kong dollar you know with 150,000 dollar watches up to uh, 20 grand it's okay but beyond that you need to have a, a, an actual address a, a, a real shop otherwise uh, they don't they don't really uh, trust you easily You blow really looks like a nightmare. That's actually a nice longer. Probably a very small size. This one even better. Yeah. And this is the aftermarket dial uh, Tiffany. Still asking a million. Which is uh, ridiculous. Uh. I remember they had the uh, Omega uh, Museum. Man, it's been there. It is like a museum. It's been there for for decades. Look at that. Retail is uh, 140, 150,000. It's this is white gold. It's a uh, very expensive uh, watch. And here asking 68. I'm sure they would take 60. What a bargain. Uh, when I was looking for my uh, GMT Master 2, this shop had a couple and. Uh, they're still there, you know, stick dial. You know, the stick dial, uh, unless it's a very late series, might just be the uh, a service dial. The stick dial here is a service dial. The, the ones that st they still put now, if you bring uh, one of these for service and they change the dial, they will put the stick dial, which uh, were the ones for the last series of the GMT Master 2, 16710s. So they will put that on the 16760. So don't think that the stick dial is uh, always that special. Price is coming off. It was uh, uh, in the 110, 120s. Now it's just under 100. Cool watch. Always like the 5513, two lines of text. That's probably where anyone's vintage journey uh, should start. I haven't really started mine, to be honest. And here is the best price for the Hulk right now, 139 for the 116610 LV. There you go, we found the cheapest one in town, 139 from a dealer. Full set. Let's see if it's in good condition. Yeah, it looks like it has a bit of, uh, bit of wear. Bit of wear I can see on the case there, but honest wear. I prefer that than uh, being all polished and everything. One three nine. That's getting a bit more reasonable. Still a lot, but reasonable. And this is uh, this is cheap actually. Forty nine thousand. One six five seven zero. 
This is beautiful. Maybe the most perfect Rolex does everything, this one. Yes, with that gray dial. Oh, I love this. Maybe I'll set everything and just get a one one six six two one. What a beautiful piece. I mean, it does everything. It's two-tone, but a bit more discreet, maybe. I like it. I like it. You don't see that every day. All right, guys, I'm going to leave you there. I hope this was uh, good fun for you. And uh, I kept it running because I didn't want to do too much editing on this video. I know you like the long walks in uh, Hong Kong, see a bit uh, how, how life is going here. So there you go. Bye bye, guys.